So after 14 years, we finally got to see the end of the Evangelion rebuild movies. I was very happy to watch those. I did watch parties over on Twitch. Watched all four over the weekend. I'm going to rewatch them again this week. So if you want to be a part of that, follow me over on Twitch. There's a link in the description. Amazon didn't just get the fourth one. They got all four of them and they redubbed them. Obviously, they dubbed them very, very quickly, too, by the way. The dub's not the greatest, for sure. But, I mean, all this can be fixed by just watching it in Japanese, so it doesn't really matter. Funimation really dropped the ball on this, which I think is fantastic. I really hope Amazon and some of these other companies step it up and start going and competing with Funimation, that would be very nice to see because Funimation had one, two, and three. They even, I think, for a time had the rights to the original series or they were trying to get it. What Funimation likes to do is wait to the last minute and try to undercut everybody and pay as little as possible. Amazon stepped in and busted out a gigantic wallet and said, yeah, we'll take, we'll take them. And Funimation essentially has lost all rights from what I from what I can see to, to Evangelion, which is great because I don't like Funimation. I don't think Amazon is that much better of a company, <laughs> but uh, I'm always happy to see uh, Funimation take an L because I don't like them having control of everything. So uh, this did very good. Broke records for Amazon. It went to the top of Amazon Prime Video. And I'm going to tell you right now, anybody that's seen these knows that there's a lot of rewatchability because it's hard. This is a uh, very complicated story. Uh, by the way, this is, I don't want to have any spoilers here. So I'm going to say uh, you don't need to watch the original series, but you probably should. And that's over on Netflix. Funimation tried to get that as well. They failed because they're cheap. So all you got to do is bust out a little bit of money and you could beat them down. Now, I just want to read this little bit here. They they point out that it it topped the charts. This is one of their best. This is a record launch for them, particularly in Japan. Amazon announced that Evangelion 3.0 plus 101. Thrice upon a time became the most watched video when it debuted on Amazon Prime. Video on August 13th, 2021. The movie also recorded an all-time high day one view amount since Amazon first launched the service in Japan, which is pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, it's available in 11 dubbed languages, I think all on day one, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but that's not where this ends. So one thing when I was watching this, <laughs> I was laughing thinking, oh my God, they're going to freak out because I mean, half the time, uh, Asuka is like practically naked the whole movie. And then, you know, they're in those tight suits. I'm thinking, yeah, they're going to definitely cry and whine about this and say it's male gaze and all of this stuff. But it turns out I was wrong. I was wrong secretly. A super woke show. <laughs> Imagine. So there won't be any spoilers for this. I, I'm not going to spoil anything because I think I, I highly recommend all four movies. The third one's pretty slow. Uh, the third one is the one that everyone dislikes, but you have to remember the third movie is like, you know, it's the third movie in a four-part series, and one of them is going to be slow. But the first two and the fourth one I, I like a lot. The third one's a little slow, but it, it's it's got its moments here and there. Anyway, there's a scene in the fourth one. This really isn't a spoiler, okay? I mean, I guess it kind of is, but it's not really a deal-breaker. It has to do with Ray. Ray is, uh, like I said, spoilers. I'm going to say spoilers. It's a small spoiler, but it's not a big deal. Ray is uh, not entirely a, a real human, I guess is the way. I'm trying to not spoil, but it's still kind of a spoiler. And there's a scene in the fourth one where she talks about how she's born without 
uh, gender or something. I, they have the actual line in here because, well, I mean, imagine like writing this, like you watch the fourth one, you wait 14 years for this conclusion. And what you get out of it is Ray talking about how she's uh, without sex. Here's the line right here. The resurrection of the advanced Ayanami series, untamed life forms made with pure souls, free of sexual distinction. The Japanese phrase translated as free of sexual distinction, uh, shayu uh, mo naku, can be translated more directly as without sex. Uh, considering Ray is naked several times in the series, uh, we can clearly tell that that's not true. But we uh, see this and we get this deep sh uh, stretch like Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four going over about how, oh, she's now agender non-binary. And they even admit, while it might be more of a reach, it's also within the realm of possibility that being free of sexual distinction could make Ray either pansexual or asexual. Uh, no. Man, you are one pathetic loser. You're calling it a reach in your own article because it's a huge reach. But there's always this big attempt to somehow put a some kind of thesis together for some popular anime or manga to be woke. And I'm really shocked that there's not a bunch of articles about this being about the male gaze and all this stuff. And how it's uh, hypersexualized and all these things. Like, well, they're saying, oh, well, she's she's non-binary. So we now claim this for the LBGTQIA+. What, is the, what does the I stand for? Someone will tell me. So they go, they go on to that. And then they talk about Kawaru, who I guess you could maybe. Uh, but our, he's not even human. So, yeah, he's, he's, well, I guess I shouldn't spoil it, but, um, if you watch, <laughs> if you watch the rebuild movies, that gets spoiled right away because he pops up in the first one, I think. So this is why they're not going after. They talk about Shinji being bi, which it's kind of up in the air. It's never explicitly stated that he is, by the way, or even Kawaro, Kawaro, am I saying that right? It's never stated explicitly, explicitly that he is. In fact, you can make a case <laughs> that Evangelion queer baits to some extent. And uh, I'm surprised they're not up in, up in arms about that. They just go ahead and assume, well, it definitely is. But here's the great thing about anime. Uh, they're never going to come out and say anything. And as much as people on Twitter will demand a change or that something happens nine times out of 10, the creators are just going to give them a gigantic middle finger and not change anything. And that's what's so great about it. Cause there are a lot of woke anime fans, tons of them, tons of them. I would almost say they dominate the English fandom, but the great thing about anime and manga is you can just ignore them <laughs> to an extent because they can't dig their claws into anything and change it. Now they can make stuff like High Guardian Spice, which deserves to be mocked endlessly. And they can make Cal Art stuff and Tumblr art, which can be mocked and should be mocked endlessly. But they cannot change what has already been. They can't change anything in Japan. And I think that that's fantastic and great. And I love it. And I love how mad they get, how upset they get that. All these characters, they can't change them. So imagine watching this movie, and that's what you jump on, that one line. You write a whole article about that. And you don't just like try to like dive into what it means and what the series is actually about. You just drive on like you dive onto one line that a fake Ray made. Cause she's not even the Ray that was in the series or the previous movies. <laughs> just these people drive me crazy. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this. 
Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. I do watch parties, play video games over there. They're always fun. Follow me over there and come hang out. Also, make sure you subscribe to Yellow Flash, my other channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. I do a lot of live streams over there that I don't do on this channel. Usually smaller and a little bit more personal. So make sure you follow me over there and sign up.